I study right whale acoustics. I study the sounds made by a right whale, what they mean, um, whether they encode individual identity, and how loud they are. And then I study the receivers as well, what they can hear, and how they respond to playbacks to get an idea of what those sounds mean. Um, and then the thing that's sort of overarching everything, which is actually from the first day of my field research when my advisor handed me a hydrophone and a recorder and said, go record whales. I was like, all the instruction I got. And I was sent out on a boat with people who were studying right whales and stuck a hydrophone in with a tanker going by. Tankers are huge and they're extremely loud and I had a headache for two days. Um, but I could hear the whales. Um, so since the beginning of my research, I've really been interested in the effects of noise on their communication since North Atlantic right whales off the east coast of the US are surrounded by ships a large percentage of the time. So right whales have two main call types that I'm going to talk a little bit about today. One is the up call, um, and we'll play an example of that one. I usually just make this one. So it's called the up call because it's a simple up sweep, and this is a stereotyped call that right whales make. It's very simple, so people like it. People use it for all sorts of applications studying right whales. Um, it's species specific. All individuals make it. Babies make it. Moms make it. Dads make it. Everybody makes this sound, and so it's sort of the stereotypical right whale call. But they also make this variable class of tonal calls that are, are very different within an individual or between individuals. And so that one example that I'm playing was one call from a female in the Bay of Fundy, and they produce these sounds to attract males to mating groups. Um, and so there are a lot of different functions for these sounds, and again, sort of as you were talking with the communication, we don't know. I mean, this is the sort of broad brush classification of the sound types that we have today. <clears throat> so right whales experience vessel noise. This is a picture of a right whale surface active group or social group in the Bay of Fundy. And this was a commercial ship coming out of St. John in New Brunswick. And this ship was heading right for this group and incidentally, the small boat I was sitting in. And um, <laughs> at about a half mile, they made a sharp turn and went around us. I mean, these boats, I was, they were going fast. I was really amazed they were that maneuverable. Um, but these sorts of interactions happen a lot in the Bay of Fundy. And even this year, um, there was a whale that died um, up in the bay. So. How far does the sound carry from the whale, the sonar sounds? Um, it depends on the habitat, really. Um, and so um, it depends on how deep the water is to how well the sound will propagate. So for example, in the Bay of Fundy, those up calls that right whales make, if it's a quiet day with no ships, we can detect them at about five miles. If it's a noisy day, we're lucky to detect them at a half mile. Um, but the same calls on the Bering Sea shelf off of Alaska, there's another species of right whales there. Um, those can actually get sort of propagated um, 20 or 30 miles because it's sort of a duct. And so it really depends on the habitat, the range. It's hard to, it's hard to give you a, a number because it depends. Um, in Florida and Georgia where these whales calve, you can't detect them more than 200 or 300 meters away because the water's so shallow. So are the ship's navigational systems, radar, et cetera, able to detect the schools of whales and, and then the, avoid them if they so choose? Um, it, I would say it depends on the ship and it depends on the captain. Um, and most of the time, no, because most of the time you don't see anything at the surface when the whales are there. And right whales in particular, their feeding behavior, often they're just a meter below the surface, which is well within the draft of the ship, but you won't, you won't see anything. Um, and so it's not really a reliable way to avoid hitting them. We have another question in the back here. Yes. Hi. Is there a, is there a noise that they're afraid of, such that you could attach it to the ship? So yeah. actually, that study has been done. Um, I was part of a study that did playback of sort of like alerting stimuli that people have shown in mammals um, causes alert. Um, so you hear them every day when an ambulance or a fire truck is coming. So that sort of design is actually there's been research to show that mammals are very you know attuned to that type of sound and will pay attention. And unfortunately, the re result of that study with tags on the back of the whales so we could hear what they were hearing um, was to come to the surface, oh. <laughs> um, which really wasn't what we wanted. Because <laughs> essentially, like, if you're driving around with that type of sound and you drive all the whales up right in front of you, that might make, make the situation work. So, we're, so some people are looking into the ability to propagate maybe noise from the ship itself in front of it. So not something that would startle the whales, but something there's some questions about the propagation of the sound from a ship. These ships are huge, and so the propellers at the back making a lot of the noise, and there's some, some people that suggest that there's a null or a quiet area, like the quietest point around would be right in front of the ship. 
Um, and so people are looking into the physics of sound and the propagation to see if there's some way to, to modify um, the situation so the whales can detect it. But the, the other thing to keep in mind is that um, whales have been around for a really long time. Ships like this have not. And there's absolutely no reason a whale should be afraid of a ship until it gets hit. And most of the time they don't get to learn from that experience, they're dead. So there's no real evolution to avoid getting hit by ships. So it's a really hard problem. I mean, these whales have one predator. They have killer whales can take a sick or injured or a, or a calf. And most of these adult right whales, nothing can touch them. I mean, they don't really care about anything because nothing's going to hurt them, evolutionarily speaking. They're just these big, fat, huge animals. And so they just go about their everyday life. And so that's another problem with these ships. The whales have no reason to fear them, and they don't usually get the chance to learn.